Welcome back. Welcome back. Another possible off-season video. Moving into the Philadelphia 76ers, we've done the Knicks and we've done the T-Wolves, so go check those out if you're just a fan of the NBA and you want to see what we have to say on those and if you enjoy this one. But talking Philadelphia 76ers, team that I thought coming into the last season was in the firm of a running for a chip. I thought that obviously injuries played a crucial role. Embiid was literally the MVP of the season before he got hurt. So now, a year later, looking back on this season, not great. Still didn't make a conference finals appearance. But, hey, looking on the bright side, you can create $60 million in cap space. So while still having Maxi and Embiid under contract, which is just insane and can easily put them into the thick of it with Boston to win next season. But we're going to go through some possible options. You probably saw a couple of them on the thumbnail, but we're going to go through some options of who they could sign. If you want to go star route, if you want to go role player route, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. But my first point, just point blank period, is I think they should re-sign Kelly Oubre. I think he was super clutch for them. And we don't have to touch on this very long because I think we all agree here. I thought that he played a really, really good season. To me, one of the better ones of his career, if not the best. And he was just one of those pieces that just fit really, really well. He's not a guy that needs the ball in his hands. He can shoot the three. He can attack the hoop. He can rebound. He'll play defense. He's just one of those glue guys that we talk about with like a Josh Hart. or If they were playing the Nets in the playoffs, I would hit him with my car. <laughs> I'll throw that out there. I'll run him right back to the ER. Go ahead. <laughs> but no, I think that I think that he was great for them, and I think he should definitely be resigned. I think he'd be around eight to twelve million. I would think maybe he gets more on the open market, and you can't get him back. But I wouldn't go anything over like fifteen. Would be crazy, but around there, I would say he was great. I mean, he was a great scorer. He was a great defender. He's a great energy guy, like you said. He was a big piece for them. Like he was an underrated piece for them too. Like I think a lot of people were looking down on that signing a little bit. Um, man, he showed you know what he can bring to a even a championship team. I think he could play a role on. One hundred percent. He definitely facilitates that role. You know, on defense and offense, and that's that's what Philly needs, especially when uh, you know you have players battling an injury throughout the season. He's one of those guys that can be reliable, and that's that's definitely big time. You know, and then let's go into the stars because, as you know, Philly wants that third star. Daryl Morey wants that third star. So, obviously, the big name, everyone's heard it. Paul George, I've said it in about every video. We yeah, there's a drinking game we're doing at TOT. Anytime Matt mentions Paul George taking a shot, viewers at home, make sure you participate. Um, but, no, yeah, being real, Paul George, I think, would be very interesting. I think people just get kind of turned off because of the playoff performances he's had as of late where he kind of – goes silent and people are worried he's going to be the next Tobias Harris where you sign with this huge deal and he doesn't show up. I'm not in that camp. I'm a big Paul George guy in general. However, I think that the money is going to be a lot, but I think I'll go into it. I'll let you guys give your thoughts, but there's a lot of reasons I think this would work just so we'll continue. Here, it, but. It, it would work. We're going to mention a couple other stars. Like Matt said, probably you saw him on the thumbnail. Um, for me, it's hard to want to go the star route with the squad, especially someone like a Paul George, even though he's probably the best fit that I could imagine just off of, he can kind of do like a KD warriors type of implementation where he's not like super ball dominant. You don't want to stunt Maxi's growth basically. So like if, if he can kind of lurk around, get a couple ISO buckets whenever they need them, be a guy where it's like, okay, we need points. You're guaranteed to score on 60% of ISOs or whatever. Um, and hit open threes and be spot up and just, and just draw defense away. Literally exactly what KD did for the Warriors. I think that'd be great, but I don't want to bring in some big heavy hitter. Who's going to mess up whatever remnants of flow that they have. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no. I mean, I think he would – I don't want to say play Tobias Harris' role because he's better than Tobias Harris, so he'll play it better. It, but but he, that is – that he would be – that would be perfect. Yes, I think he would probably average around 18 to 20 or 16 to 20. Like, I don't think it's going to be this wild, oh, he's – Would he buy in? Again. Huh? Would he buy in? Yeah, why not? Like, you want to win a chip. And I, to be honest, the Clippers, to me, just don't seem like they're going to win a chip anytime soon. No, they're not. So I'm out. I'm out on the Clippers. So 
if you're Paul George, you can get signed for over $200 million four years. So around 50 mil per. So that, yes, that's a ton of your cap space and it's going to be tough, but Paul George's game can go until late in his career. And he's still not even that old. So like 33, 34. Yeah. Like not even, I think, I think he's 32, but um, no, I mean, he shot 45 and a half percent on catch and shoot threes last season. Tobias Harris shot 35. So, I mean, that's a 10% gap let alone. And while Paul George's were also a lot more difficult and a lot of them are like grenades and he's just obviously a way better scorer than Tobias Harris ever was. Tobias is butt cheeks. Facts. I've been, I've been saying that for years. Also, I mean, what, when was, would you say was Paul George's best season? Maybe pre leg injury, but I think to me, thunder. Was, thank you. Thunder. He played with a speedy athletic point guard in Russell Westbrook in his prime. Maxi is not in his prime yet, but he's getting there. And then, oh, wait, what was the other season we mentioned? Oh, the Indiana Pacers when he played with Roy Hibbert at the prime of his career, who, while by no means is Joel Embiid, but he knows how to play with a big. So you can do that. Zubats is also a very good big. He's not Embiid, but he's a very good big. So it's just a lot of things that, to me, I think, as I'm talking it out, make me think. The yeah, you're talking me into it, too. It wouldn't be a bad thing. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, I don't know if I love that signing. I think I would like it. I would want to see it more. That was how I was with the Porzingis one. I was like, I think it'll work. I got to see if they're just going to be so reliant on the three, it hurts them, which in some in the two games they've lost in the playoffs it has, but that's a different video. But, yeah. It's all incumbent on him playing that role. Like, you, you can't have him come in there and stun Maxi's development, and you got to let him be That's shot. the only concern. And, and what I was going to say, what I think would, you know, overall kind of, you know, allow P to still show up as himself, but, you know, to not stunt Ma Maxi's growth, I think Maxi is a well-rounded player enough to have a facilitation aspect to his game to where he you can trust him as the one – for 48 minutes, honestly. So get rid of – like, you could put Kyle Lowry on the bench if you want to, if you want to hold on to him. But let Maxi really have that space to run the one. Get rid of Tobias Harris and um, really look at your space and see who you could add into the two. But I think with with P there and Joel Embiid and you got Maxi running the one, that gives them a kind of, you know, nice little space. And then you could put DeAnthony Melton at the two – you know, give him a little catch and shoot opportunity or do whatever he does, play defense. But I think that allowing Maxi to have the ball in his hands primarily to to feed and bead or be able to look out on the wing for P to create his shot or, you know, hit an open three. I think that that would definitely alleviate a lot of pressure from Philly as a team, but it wouldn't get in the way of what Maxi is already capable of, which we see. You feel me? Tobias, they need to trade for like a new stretching table. He's not. He's gone. Room. He's free. I mean, ex excuse me, not trade. They need to get him out and and take air in return. He's so ass. Yeah, he's. I mean, any Sixers fan that likes Tobias Harris isn't a Sixers fan. So never met one in my life. But you know, that's the plan. As according to me, I think that's Plan A. I think getting Paul George is Plan A. Then you got about eight to ten to fifteen million afterward to build the rest of the roster out we saw guys like you just signed a kelly Oubre last season for a minimum deal a Derek jones jr playing a crucial role on an nba finals team on a minimum deal you're gonna find guys that you can get on a minimum you just are it's a matter if you hit on them or not you may be able to get like a torian prince on a minimum deal yes i think he's not great but like he's a guy that you can go and sign on a relative minimum deal and get an impact out of i think also 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 some some folks I'm hearing that that may be on the block, Malik Monk as well. I think Malik Monk could be one of those players as well. He's just gonna get more of a bag than that, though. That's the problem. Yeah. I was gonna bring Bi to the table instead of Paul George. We had a healthy dialogue right there about it. I think Bi is too ball dominant now that I'm kind of thinking about it. Um, and I think he wouldn't be as good at filling into that KD style role as. Paul George would be, but hey, who am I to say? He he might be a decent fit as well. You know, B.I. would definitely be interesting. I think it just gives them another offensive weapon. I mean, there's guys that, like, maybe LeBron somehow doesn't pick up his player option, doesn't stay with the Lakers. I mean, you get LeBron on that roster, G fucking G. But um, he would just be – he would just, like, honcho the whole team. Like, he wouldn't be scoring 50 a night, but he would just control – like, he, that they would – they'd be my front runner to come out of the East for him. 
maybe the front runner to win it all, dude. If you sign LeBron, but that's a different conversation. Or like even a guy to a lesser degree, which I also don't see happening, is OG Ananobi. Free agent. Didn't re-sign with the Knicks as of right now, the time of recording this. Maybe he's re-signing he with the Knicks. Maybe he does tomorrow, but yeah, he's going to re-sign. Um, that's expected. Maybe he doesn't. Those are like the lottery ticket kind of things. But yeah, going back to the BI thing, I think it'd be interesting. He's definitely a lot cheaper, and then you still have about $25 million to work with in cap space. I mean, you're going to have the trade kicker part of it, but – you're going to be able to build out the rest of the roster and get like a solid seven man rotation out of it. If you get a BI, which I don't think, I don't think BI can be a two on a championship team. I just don't. That's just my opinion. I don't. And depending on how good the one is, no chance, but like, I still just don't think he can be a two. So he's going to either have to adapt or something. Cause the Pelicans to me are every single person on that roster is like up for possible trades this offseason. It's just like the craziest thing ever because I thought they were going to be pretty solid and they just haven't seemed to figure it out yet. And yes, Zion was hurt. And I actually like them with Zion matching up against the Thunder. But I guess we're going to have to wait and see another season until we can actually see them perform fully healthy in the offs, hopefully. But um, a lot of different things this offseason for the Sixers can do. So I'm excited. Craziness. I'm excited to see what happens. It's early, it's June, but we got three, four more months till NBA basketball is back. So we'll be here. We'll be covering all of the. T- we got two, season. three more days till the finals start. Yep. I'm yeah. pumped up, but like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.